One of my clients recently asked me, how do I go about using an iPhone to record GPS information, and then how do I take that and put it into my pictures? Well, it turns out that if you're using an iPhone, there are several free versions of uh, GPS software. One is called Motion X GPS Lite. Now, I use the paid version of this. I found it to be an excellent piece of uh, software. But the free version will get you started. Just go to the iTunes store and you can download it. And it's pretty easy to set up and to uh, operate. You just follow the instructions on, on the software. Now, there are several different types of software out there, so I'm not going to be showing you in this tutorial how to use the various types of tracking software for your phone. The one thing that they have in common is that they will email you a track so that you can take that track and put GPS locations onto your images. That's what this tutorial is about. Now you see here I'm in my mail program and I'm on a Mac and this is the output that I get from Motion X GPS. It gives me a synopsis of what happened on my uh, travel and then at the bottom it gives you two files a .kmz file, which is basically for Google Earth, and a .gpx file. The .gpx file is the one that you're going to be using to get your information. But in the meantime, let's just go up here, and next to Map, here's a uh, little link that says View on Map. You click that, it opens up your browser, and it gives you a representation of where you went. This particular uh, track is a walk that I took one morning just going out and shooting some pictures. Okay, let's close that up and let's see how do I go about getting this track information into my photos so that I'll know exactly where I shot the pictures. Now, <clears throat> to do this, first thing you do is you want to import your images into your computer. I use Lightroom because Lightroom is a fantastic program for getting the uh, images in and it also allows you to directly see on a map where your image was taken. Now you can do the same thing in Photoshop using the bridge or Photoshop Elements using the bridge. You bring your images in, they're into the bridge and let's just see how that looks here. See all my images are here in the bridge and when I click on one of the images, my geolocation data will show up in the metadata. Okay, so how do I get it into the metadata? To do that, there are several, again, free programs out there for both Mac and Windows that will allow you to transfer the track information into your images. Now, the one that I use is one that is called GPS Photo Linker. It's a free program. This one is for the Macintosh since I'm on a Mac here. And it's very, very simple to use. Basically, what you do is you open the program and you import your track file. That's that .gpx file. And you import your pictures and you associate them. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. I'm going to go up to this button that says Track Files, and you see it opens a little window here, and I can load my tracks. Well, what I did was when I imported my images into my computer, I put my .gpx file in the same folder as the images, and you can see here's a bunch of images. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight that file and click Open, and it shows up over here as my track file. Next, I want to bring my photos in. So I go over to the button here that says Load Photos and I click it. And I get down to the same place that uh, I was before, to the same folder. And I'm just going to go in and highlight all the photos that were in here. And I'm doing that by shift clicking. And I just say Open. Now, I could just as easily 
drag in the images directly from the desktop or I could drag them in from the bridge. Uh, there's many, many ways to get the information in. Now, one thing that I do want to show you here. This works on several different types of images. These are all, well, they're not all raw images. Here's a Canon raw image. It's a .CR2. Just below it is the same image in JPEG format. And we'll come down a little bit farther, and I had converted several of the images to DNG, which is the Adobe Digital Negative format. So how do we go about doing this? Well, what I normally do is just click on one of the images, and I come over here to this tab where it says single. So I'm just working on a single image here. And it goes in and it says, all right, this photograph was uh, taken uh, 13 sec seconds after this point was recorded. In other words, your GPS locator on your phone will record uh, data points every, in this case, about every 12 to 15 seconds. So here, this was recorded 13 seconds before the photo. Here's another one that was recorded at the same time as the photo. And then here is an average point where you take these two different points and average them together. At this spot, I can go in, and since this is zero seconds after the photo, I can just click on view on map and it shows me exactly where I was standing when I shot the picture. So let's close this and I just want to bring one other thing to your attention. I'm using what's called the system time zone because this is going to take the time that's in my camera and associate it to the time that the data point was recorded and these have to be very accurate usually within the same minute is close enough if you can get closer than that even better okay the other thing that you need to know is that your computer will automatically switch back and forth between uh, daylight savings time and standard time your camera will not so that when it comes to daylight savings time, be sure and reset the time in your camera. And it's the same thing when you go from time zone to time zone. You want to make sure that uh, your times are correct. Now it turns out that I'm in the Pacific time zone right now and I'm on Pacific Standard Time which is Greenwich Mean Time minus eight hours. So that's the timing that I'm using here. Now that I've said all that, let's go in and let's take all this information and associate it with the pictures. Well, what I can do here is right below view on map, there's another button here that says save to photo. Now, watch over on the right hand side here, this says not geotagged, but as soon as I save to photo, it is geotagged. And I get a little picture of the earth here, so now if I click on this, again, it will show me where I am. This brings up Google Maps. Okay, so let's close that and we can go to the next image and do the same thing. Well, we don't have to do it one by one. Since I've got a whole folder of images and if I've got several hundred images in this folder, it's not going to be very nice to have to go through one by one. So what I do is I come over here to the tab that says automatic. Now I always do the single one first just to make sure it works. Then I go over to automatic and I come over, I select an image and hit command or control A. And what that does is it selects all my images. So now I come over to my linking options. Now what I want to set here is link to nearest recorded point. I can do that or to a time weighted average point. If I were in a uh, moving car and my times that I'm recording are 10-15 seconds apart, then what this will do is this will interpolate to where the image is going to be. And actually let's go ahead and let's set that. So we'll go with the time weighted average point. 
and I'm going to link the photo to the track point if it's between points no more than 250 meters apart and I could say or more than 1300 seconds from the closest point so let's just say between points no more than 250 meters apart now the next box down I'm going to say process all loaded photos not just the ones selected so what I really didn't have to do here as I didn't have to go in and select all the photos I've got an option here that will automatically do that for me and I can say ignore previously geotagged photos this is something that if I've already gone in and tagged something then it'll just automatically ignore it but let's just go in now and let's click on batch save to photos and what happens is it's saving to all 28 of the images here and it's coming through and it's done so now I can come through and I can pick any of these other images that I've got here here's one where I'm standing right in the middle of the street let's uh, deselect everything and just look at this one image and let's see where I was there and this says yeah I was standing right in the middle let's bring this up I was standing right here right in the middle of this intersection and it put me pretty close to it okay now what do we do after we've done this well it turns out that this is a great little viewer that you can use to determine where you have uh, taken all of these images if you're in if you're using Lightroom you can access this information from directly within Lightroom let me show you how to do that but before we go to Lightroom I'm going to go to the bridge and now I'm going to go in and I'm just going to click on one of these images this one where I was standing in the middle of the street and I can come over here and scroll down through my metadata and you can see that it gives me GPS data let me zoom in on that just a little bit you can see here it gives me GPS data it gives me the latitude and longitude and altitude however what it does not do is allow me to see that location on a map I can do that using the program that I use to create the GPS or to, to link the GPS together but I can't do that here so let's take a look at what happens in Lightroom okay I'm in Lightroom here's all of my images and let's just click on one of these images here and let's see where we are well let's see I don't see any GPS data on here anywhere well there's a reason for that because with Lightroom what I have to do is I have to import the information the information is written in the metadata of the file but it's not recorded in the metadata of the program it's not in the catalog so what I need to do here is I'm just going to test this one image first I'm going to highlight that image and I'm just going to right click on the image and it's then go down to metadata here and say read metadata from file and I'm going to click that and it says well this is going to overwrite the metadata that's in the program but yeah I'm going to have to do that so let's go ahead and read it and now I'm going to scroll down here a little bit and here's a line that says GPS and it gives me my locations and there's a little arrow next to it and what happens when I click on that arrow it shows me the map location it brings up Google Maps in my browser and it tells me that I was standing right where this green arrow is and I could actually go in with the street view and take a look at it but this is what I can do and this is all from within Lightroom now let's go back into Lightroom and since we did this with just the one image we need to do it with everything so I'm gonna select all of my images and the way I'm gonna do that is use command or control A to select everything and I could right click the same way as I did before but now I'm going to go up to the metadata tab up here to the uh, to the menu because I want to show you other ways of doing it 
and now I'm going to go in to say read metadata from files and it says gives me a warning it says it's going to overwrite the metadata in the Lightroom but that's okay we want to read it and all of a sudden it's done and now I can go in here and let's go back to this one where the I was standing in the middle of the street I've highlighted that here's my GPS line I'm gonna click on the arrow and it's gonna open up the map and let's zoom in and it says where the green arrow is I'm standing right in the middle of the street. Now this is off a little bit. It looks like it might be off about uh, one lane of traffic, which uh, may be about 10 feet. But that's pretty good for being able to find out where things are. Now I can go into any of these other images and it will tell me the same thing. Here's one that uh, is a sign that I shot at 85th Street and let's see what happens this is 85th Street right here and I was just standing there looking at the sign